so let's get started with the demo and to start with um, we'll just follow the normal convention that is clear all close all and CLC okay um, and the first we need to generate the signal okay so generate generate the signal we'll do the BPSK modulation so I'll say that BPSK modulated and um, so let's call it as signal and I need to generate the set of random numbers okay um, the random bits basically and in order to do that the, one of the better ways of doing it is you generate the set of random numbers and then you uh, convert them into the set of random bits so um, ran and ran function is um, the one that is provided by MATLAB and Octave and what it does is it actually um, generates a set of random numbers between zeros and ones okay with flat distribution and uh, so here what I have done is I am saying that rand and 1 comma 10 power 5 so it is going to generate 10 power 5 sets of random numbers okay for us and let's see how it looks like so I will run this code let's run this and as you can see the signal has here signal has popped up it says dimension 10 power 5 and the values is also being mentioned there and let us try to see the first 20 elements just to get the feel of it and this is how it looks like so as you can see the data the numbers are between zeros and ones okay and but this is not what I want what I what I want is a set of random bits ones and zeros and um, one way to convert that is um, by using the logical operation um, a conditional logical operation so what I'll say here is that if I say greater than 0 0.5 here then what is it going to do is all the elements of this signal 1 to 120 okay if it is greater than 5 then it is going to return true and true it means it is 1 and if it is less than 0.5 then it is going to return false which is basically the zero condition so if you enter and you can see that well um, this guy is not less than uh, is less than 0.5 so it is throwing one, 0 to me right these two three these three elements are all ones because they are more than 0.5 and so on so in order to generate the set of random numbers uh, and the random bits all I need to do is I'll modify this guy and I'll say 0.5 okay greater than 0.5 so up to this point it is fine but then I need to generate a BPSK modulated this is um, the set of bits right so ones and zeros and I want to make it as a BPSK so um, uh, I need to have zeros mapped to minus one and one will remain as it is and again there is a small trick to do that and if I do 2x minus 1 okay where x is my signal then in that case I can if I do 2x minus 1 and you can see that 0 is mapped to minus 1 and 1 remain as it is so now this is why raw PPSK data so all I need to do is I need to say here oh, 2 times x okay which is my signal x is my signal minus 1 okay so minus 1 so this is how it looks like now as you would know that um, in communication systems we have the I channel and Q channel right so we have two channels but uh, for BPSK only occupies one channel so for the second channel I will just uh, put zeros so let us slightly change the names of the variables so this will be my I component and I will say signal signal Q signal Q equals to it will be just zeros okay so zeros of the same dimensions uh, it doesn't have anything basically okay so now I have I channel and Q channel together and I can easily do the um, uh, scatter plot and I can examine how the scatter plot looks like so let's do the scatter I mean MATLAB it is scatter plot in Octave it is scatter so let's say it is signal underscore I and signal underscore Q okay and let us see how the scatter plot looks like so I will run this guy again and let's see okay so I have got a plot here and as you can see um, I have got two small blobs here um, or two small dots um, one is into minus one and one is at plus one okay um, if you cannot see I'll just highlight it for you guys um, so 
this is the point okay I am referring to this is minus 1 and this is the point which I am referring to this is plus 1 right so this is minus 1 and plus 1 and you might wonder why they are just two points the, the, uh, the reason is because all the points are basically overlapping on top of each other and as a result you don't see uh, more than two points okay so this is our BPSK data and uh, so now what we need to do is um, we need to generate um, the noise okay so we need to add the noise and this is where the actual thing happens so add the noise add the noise um, so uh, we have three different ways in which we can add the noise one is um, let's just add the noise by uh, variance itself okay and then we will try to add the noise with respect to the signal by SNR and abnormal value so uh, add the noise on known variance so I can keep a for loop okay so let's say that variance I'll call it as var um, is equal to um, let's take the range 1 by 50 and let's increment by 1 by 10 and let's go up to 0.5 okay so these are the steps step size that I'm going to have and then I need to generate the noise of this power so to generate the noise noise is equal to now see the idea is that um, I have the signal which is complex in nature okay so I need to generate the noise also which is complex basically it's going to add the noise both to I channel and Q channel separately but as we have seen in the previous video the noise has to be uncorrelated it has to be zero mean okay and it needs to be orthogonal it needs to be independent all those conditions are satisfied when you use this function randan okay so what I'll do is I will say that generate the um, noise elements for me so I'm going to generate the noise 10 power 5 element okay so each element of noise will be added to the each data point of my signal remember that so um, 10 power 5 and then I want to generate the complex noise so I will say j times rand n and again the same thing so it is 1 comma 10 to the power of 5 okay now there is a catch here now the idea is that um, if you use this random function it generates the uh, noise with zero mean and unit variance again if I use uh, generate the noise here it is going to generate with zero mean and unit variance and if you combine them up together then it is going to increase the noise power okay so in order to normalize this I need to normalize with square root of so I need to normalize so it is square root of 2 okay so when you do the square root of 2 okay this is the basic trigonometry or the simple projection function so basically the idea is if I have a vector of unit magnitude um, let me try to highlight it here so the idea is that if I have the vector here okay so let's say this guy is of unit magnitude so if you take the two projections here and here so this guy will be 1 upon square root of 2 right and this guy also will be square root of 2 if this is 45 degrees so this is what we are trying to achieve here so what I'm trying to say is that my noise vector is if I want the noise vector to be of the unit variance or the unit power um, then in that case my individual projections okay the real projections this is I and Q it needs to be square root of 2 it needs to be scaled here so that's what I'm doing here so when you scale the I component by square root of 2 and the Q component by square root of 2 then in that case the overall length or the power of the vector the variance of the vector will boil down to 1 okay so I hope that has made sense to you guys and so this is how we generate the noise um, the normalized unit variance noise and now for AWGN I need to add the noise onto my signal right so let's say add noise um, add noise equals to the signal that I already have okay now um, I have the I and Q components of the signal right so let's combine them together and generate one complex signal so let's call it as a signal uh, let's call it a signal and signal is complex complex of signal I okay signal I and signal Q okay so all it is going to do is um, it is going to combine I and Q component and generate the complex signal basically and so I'm going to add the complex noise onto the complex signal right if you don't want to do that well you can add them independently okay so let's say you, you said that I don't want to do that then in that case signal I will be added with only rand n of i which is normalized by square root of 2 
okay and then you need to generate another set of random numbers and add to the signal q okay and normalize by square root of 2 but this is a more um, optimal way of doing it okay and neat way of doing it um, so this is uh, this is it so we have added the noise and now we need to see um, how it looks like in terms of the constellations because um, the understanding of the constellation is very important okay um, just by looking at the constellation you can figure out how much is the actual noise so um, but that for that you need to have some experience and to get started so we can just have a feel of it um, let's have so what I'm doing here is I'm saying plot real and imaginary components okay of add noise and I want to plot them as dots okay as a scatter constellation so what I will do is I will say um, let's say D star so it is going to give me um, let's see how it looks like Uh, okay, let's get rid of D and let's say we want R, okay, the stars in terms of the red ones, okay. Okay, so let's try to run this guy. Um, so before running, we need to end the loop here. So let us end the loop and uh, there is one more thing which is we need to add the power okay so now this entire this complete term is unit power so now I can add the power according to the variance that I want okay and all we need to do is we need to multiply it by the variance so can I say that it is star variance okay and okay this is multiplication right so it is 1 upon square root of 2 then we have the set of complex random numbers 10 power 5 element I scale it up okay by the variance and then I'm adding the noise into the signal and uh, I'm going to put it through the loop and I'm going to plot the constellations and if you want to see the animations then we need to do draw now and um, expose okay don't be bothered about that what it is okay it just does the animation for us so that is more than enough and let's run this guy and see if it works okay so uh, yeah it looks a bit better and you can see that um, as the noise variance is increasing you can see the blobs okay getting bigger and bigger okay so um, as you can see um, the blobs okay um, actually it will not be visible in red because I have the color in red so let's do one thing um, let's get rid of this and um, let's try to plot it in blue itself okay so let's get rid of this red color so that we can make better sense out of it okay so as you can see here that um, as the noise is increasing the size of the blobs getting bigger and bigger okay and um, right so now if you see here this is minus one right and this is plus one so the original blob is supposed to be sitting here but the because of the noise the data elements have got scattered around okay this uh, minus one and the elements have got scattered around plus one and depending upon the size of the noise that you introduce okay the size of the blob is going to change so before we had seen that all the points were overlapping over the single point okay but now you will see that different data elements has got the different level of randomness in it and uh, overall the noise variance uh, is the variance that we have introduced but the individual elements will be the different kind of scattering okay so this is how it looks like when you add the noise now the idea is we want to introduce the SNR right um, so this was just the variant so it is completely independent of the noise I am simply adding some noise with certain power irrespective of what the signal power is so um, let us try to add the noise uh, with respect to the signal and in order to do that um, let us also try to examine how much is the signal power that we have okay so um, in order to see the signal power um, so let's say it's p underscore signal remember now I'm considering this set of data as one signal okay so the power is supposed to be the average out across all the data elements so it is basically the mean absolute of signal squared okay it is mean absolute signal squared 
this is it so this is my power and let us see how the power looks like so I'll just save it and let us run this the single line okay so if you press F9 it should be able to execute okay and if you want to see the power of the signal it is equal to 1 and it is quite intuitive because the signals are plus and minus ones right and if you add them up together and then average by the number of element it has it will boil down to one so this is the signal power but then um, what about the signal energy how much is the signal energy so let's say energy of the signal because this is what we are interested um, I'm interested in the energy of the individual bits okay so well the energy is nothing else but the absolute square of the signal right you don't take the mean of it and so let us see how much is the energy and we can run this guy again and we can check just press F9 select an F9 and we can know how much is the signal energy okay so it is going to be a vector because now it is going to give me giving it's going to give me the individual energies of the bits right so the bit 1 bit 2 bit 3 and so on and it has the energy of 1 so this is what I'm interested in the energy per bit rather than the noise uh, rather than the power of the signal which is uh, average across all the elements okay so let's quit that and so now let us try to introduce the noise so what I'll do is I'll copy this section of the code and I will try to repeat it with the SNR okay so now let us replace this guy with SNR and let us say I want to introduce the noise between 0 to 10 dB and increment of 1 okay so this is in db this is in db and the, this db is basically the implied thing okay you can consider it as a linear scale as well um, but then you need to take the things accordingly so if I consider this in db then uh, remember I want to uh, figure out how much is the noise variance okay I need to add the noise here what should be the noise power and I need to figure out from the SNR now you will be knowing that um, from the logarithmic perspective um, that uh, SNR so I need to convert this into the linear scale okay so SNR let's call it as SNR linear so SNR linear is going to be 10 power okay it will be 10 power SNR which is in dB divided by 10 and uh, if you're wondering how it is then um, it is something like this so um, you know that uh, 10 log base 10 right 10 log base 10 of SNR on the linear scale SNR on the linear scale is equal to my SNR in dB so I know this quantity and I want to figure out this quantity so if you're familiar with the logarithmic and inverse logarithm things then uh, it basically boils down to 10 log base 10 of SNR linear right um, it is equal into SNR in dB divided by 10 and if I want to find this guy it basically boils down to 10 to the power 10 to the power of SNR divided by 10 is going to give me SNR on the linear scale okay and so this is what we are doing to so SNR on the linear scale SNR on the linear scale is 10 to the power of SNR by 10 okay 10 to the power of SNR by 10 so um, this is just the one step but I still need to figure out how much is the noise power well so now we know that well signal divided by noise is equal to SNR linear right SNR linear so now I know what SNR linear is I also know what is the signal power correct because uh, we have seen well the signal power is equal to unity signal power is equal to 1 okay so um, from that I can figure out what is the noise power which is my noise variance okay so this is what we are going to do now so let's get rid of this so I have now the SNR on the linear scale now I need to know how much is the signal power which is basically the P signal so the noise or the variance of the noise is can I say it is equal to how much let's uh, do the calculation again so I know well signal by noise is my SNR linear SNR linear I want to figure out what the noise is so basically it is signal power divided by SNR linear right that is going to give me the noise power which is my noise variance okay so 
It's basically signal power divided by SNR linear. So variance is my signal power, which I have calculated there. SIG signal power divided by SNR linear. Right, that's it. And then this variance, I'm going to plug this variance here, which is already there. Right, so now I have things in terms of the dB. So um, let me make this as figure 2. Okay, and let's try to run this code. Everything else should remain the same, right? So let's run this guy and check how it goes. So press F5. And um, okay, so this is the first one, which is the noise introduced without taking the signal power into consideration. Okay. And as you can see, as the variance increases, the blob size increases. And now we have the figure 2. And this is with 0 dB SNR. Okay. 0 dB SNR means the signal power and the noise power are same. And then slowly I'm increasing the signal strength. Or I can say I'm reducing the noise power. They are the relative terms. Okay. So as you can see, um, as the signal strength is increasing or as the noise power is decreasing, you can see the size of the blob becoming smaller and smaller. Okay, but this is the more intuitive and more correct way of analyzing um, the signal to noise because here I have introduced the noise with respect to the signal power. It is not just randomly introduced variance as we have seen in the um, figure one. Okay, so as again you can see, um, you can see here that well the blob was here right and um, for the very high noise the blob was quite big right it were almost kind of overlapping over each other and if you even increase the noise then they will they will kind of you know merge into each other like this and it will be very difficult so once they merge into each other then it is almost impossible to uh, separate out the bits from the decoder because if this minus one jumps over here jumps over here somewhere here on the positive scale then the decision boundary so decision boundary is zero is my decision boundary if this guy jumps over here then there's no way to figure out well that i had transmitted minus one okay it is going to decode it as one only and that will translate into the bit error fine so now let us try to understand the abno concept okay so let's get rid of this and so what about the abno thing so I'll close these figures and okay so abno right um, let us try to write the equation here so we had seen before that well SNR is equal to 3 dB right plus abno plus it was 10 10 log base 10 of K now if you have the BPSK signal okay if you have BPSK then in that case k is equal to 1 so it means that this quantity will be 0 in decibel terms okay so the if you want to represent in terms of abno it is basically snr snr minus 3 is equal to abno that is it so if you want to represent in terms of the abno the power that is being introduced into your signal you just have to do snr minus 3 but remember if you use qpsk then there is going to be an offset okay if you use qpsk k becomes equal to 2 so there will be a 6 db offset between snr and abno values okay so um, just to complete that so let's get rid of this so let's say i want to do things on Abno scale. So let's say Abno linear, Abno linear um, is equal to. So it will be 10 to the power of. Now SNR is in dB. So I know well uh, what is the relationship between the SNR and Abno. So it will be SNR minus 3, SNR minus 3 divided by 10, and that's it. So now I have introduced the variance in terms of Abno, and so let's call it as variance 1 or variance Abno. Okay, using the abno so that is equal to abno linear right it is abno linear signal divided by abno linear signal divided by abno linear and I will replace this guy variance by variance underscore abno right so let us run this and see there will be 3 dB difference so not it's not be too much visible in terms of the constellation 3 dB um, but let's run this and try to complete uh, for the sake of completion um, 
and let's see whether it is possible to visually see the 3db difference in the uh, constellation blobs okay so let's run this guy and um, okay so I am having this is the figure one which is just the ran a variance which I have introduced without taking the signal power into consideration okay it seems that there is some error because uh, uh, right so it says where is abno undefined it is undefined where abno and where abno is undefined line 36 is var underscore eb alright so this is enbo is a typo right so just make this guy as abno ebno okay save it and let's run this thing again okay so this is figure one with variance and uh, it seems that we have got another error let's check what the error is okay it says test noise hmm something has gone here wrong Right, so what I have done here is I have taken the signal, right? I, uh, so, okay, let's try to uh, analyze what the error is about, okay, so that we can get some debugging skills as well. So here it says that, well, the test noise operator star non conformant argument, it says the operator 1 is 10 power 5 element and operator 2, uh, operator 2 is 10 power 5 elements, blah blah blah, and the error is here at uh, 36. Now, what is going on here is um, this. Uh, this var abno okay it should be a scalar quantity because this is the power so here what I did was I did signal divided by the uh, abno linear this is the power term this is the signal so I need to have the power here right it should be p underscore signal which is a scalar quantity which is divided by the scalar and it should give me the scalar so now I think it should be okay so let's run this guy again okay and uh, so this is the figure one which is uh, the variance uh, code and now we have the figure two okay with abno so I've introduced the noise with reference to the bit to noise ratio and yeah okay um, we can see the difference 3 dB difference is uh, is quite uh, significant um, so as you can see the noise that is introduced is quite high okay it's 3 dB higher than what we have in the SNR and so this is how it looks like in terms of the abno so the final term so I have the blobs are focused around um, plus and minus one okay and this distribution is Gaussian in nature okay so this brings uh, to the conclusion of um, uh, the AWG in channels and how we can introduce the noise um, into the signal using the three different ways and um, what is the difference between the SNR and abno I hope that you guys have enjoyed these videos and um, we'll carry on.